Hello! Space Engineers just released their new modding API. This is fantastic. We can now put code into the game of Space Engineers. In case you're wondering, that will let you create life support, create food, create plants, create whatever you would like. So Space Engineers is about to explode into uh, a pretty joyous place for mods. I'm going to teach you how to make one of those mods. We're going to run through their default little project, but I'm going to take it I'm going to take it through step by step piece by piece, every line. Rather than just quickly go through it, I'm going to take this nice and slow. I'm also going to be doing it in MonoDevelop. Um, whether you prefer MonoDevelop or Visual Studio is up to you, but the first steps are already covered in Visual Studio and they aren't covered in MonoDevelop yet, so I'm going to use MonoDevelop. Uh, MonoDevelop is not programmed quite as well as Visual Studio, so there are a few things that you're going you're gonna to want to be aware of. First thing first, start MonoDevelop doesn't matter if you've got anything on the left, you just want to hit File, New, Solution. We need to make this in C-sharp, and we need to make it an empty project is fine. So, where are we going to put it? Well, we actually do not want to put it in user Craig's documents, projects, whatever. Um, that's not where Space Engineers looks for mods. In order for Space Engineers to find our mod, we need to put it in the Space Engineers mod directory. Now, if you are using Visual Studio, you can do percent app data percent, and it'll take you there. Yeah, that's not something you can really do here in MonoDevelop. It doesn't understand that at all. But what you can do is you can manually go into a folder like this uh, and browse over to that location that you're trying to reach. In this case, it is C users Craig app data roaming space engineers mods. If you're not Craig, that part will be different. Um, you can also just type percentage app data percentage and hit enter and it'll take you pretty close. This is the directory that is full of mods. If it is in this directory, it is available to be plugged into your game. So let's create a new directory for our new mod. We'll call this the monotest mod. Mods are kind of complicated, so there's a lot of options, but we're not going to be using anything except for the basics. Data. We create this capital D data directory, and anything inside of it will be installed as part of the mod. So then we create a new folder, capital S scripts. Anything in this directory will be compiled at runtime. That means that the C sharp we put into this is just text. We're not compiling it, we're not creating a library, we're just putting raw C sharp in here, and it will compile when it gets run. Uh, if you are actually trying to create a mod in the long run, you're probably going to have to be doing some more stuff to it, but this is all we need to do at the moment. So you just grab that, copy it, go over here, and this button here will open and close the location bar, so there you go. We can call it anything we'd like. Mono test is fine. And we have just created a new solution, but we can't see it. Uh -huh. Well, depending on your exact setup and what your kind of preferences are, you may not actually be able to see the project view. Um, just switch to debug and you'll be able to see it fine if that's the case. So here's our monotest system. It's empty. Let's add a new file. We're going to want to add a new script, a class. Hmm. Let's call this the evil sensor class. We're doing the exact same thing the exact same mod that they are using as their default, we are going to use as our default. I'm not sure it's the best choice, and I'll explain why as we go along, but we're going to go ahead and do just this. Alright, so here is our evil sensor class. Now we would just want to override, and uh, where is all of our stuff? Well, we've told, we've put our, our class into the directory where space engineers can find it, but we haven't told MonoDevelop where to find Space Engineers. So that's our next step. Go into References, right-click, Edit References, Net Assemblies. So here is the difficulty. This is not the same directory. This is the directory where all of the DLLs were installed. This is the directory where Steam installs your games. And I have popped that open here. And in my case, it's C, Program Files 86, Steam, Steam Apps, Common, Space Engineers, bin. This is the important thing to remember. It's bin. Um, yours might be in a slightly different location. It's up to you to find it. One of the things I have noticed is that cutting and pasting this directory didn't seem to work. I had to manually navigate there, but we're there now. No, we're not. We're in Roaming Space Engineers. Let me go and manually uh, navigate there. Mm -hmm.
Sorry, I'm doing it off screen because it requires me navigating through literally my whole computer. Because cutting and pasting doesn't work. Steam apps, common. S is for space engineers. Why do you have so many games installed? Sp, sp. Where the hell is it? There it is. Between space, uh, space Chem and Star Trek Online bin. There we go. So here we are. <clears throat> I'm in the right directory now, and you can see all this complicated stuff. You don't have to worry about any of this complicated stuff. All you want to do is install all of the Sandbox DLLs and all of the VRage DLLs. Okay? The Sandbox DLLs are how you talk to the game, and the VRage DLLs are how they handle all of their position and velocity and physics. You may not actually need all of these, but there's no penalty for using them, so whatever. We now have a bunch of references. Look at all these references. All that's left is to tell this file to use those references. So using sandbox dot. Oh, look at all these options. We got tons of options. Which ones of these are we going to end up using? Uh, uh, just put them all in. Later on, you can figure out which ones you're actually going to be using and which ones you aren't. I'm going to skip audio because I'm pretty sure we're not planning to use audio. All right. But unfortunately, that's not actually enough because there are some very, very important subdirectories that we need. So using sandbox.common.components because we're going to be putting components into the game world. Sandbox.common.objectbuilders, because we're going to be building a lot of objects. Sandbox.modapi.ingame, because we are going to be using the mod in the game. And sandbox.modapi.interfaces, because, well, we're not actually using any of the interfaces, but we might someday. That's all you need to do. So I just basically used every directory. <laughs> Uh, so if you can't seem to figure out, if it's not auto-filling or giving you the options, you probably just forgot to put in one of these uh, using directives. So, what's our next step? Well, we don't want to be public class evil sensor without anything else. We're not just a default sensor class or anything like that. Uh, we would like to be a class that is part of this game. And to do that, we are going to descend from the my logic, uh, my game logic component. Now, in case you're wondering, the my game logic component is a lot like the mono behavior component in Unity. Um, this is a script that will get added to an existing game object. We were we are not going to be we're not descending from the sensor class. We are instead just descending from the default logical script class, and that means that this script will get stuck on the sensor. But Space Engineers doesn't know that we want to stick it on the sensor. So how do we tell Space Engineers? that we are going to stick this on the sensor. My entity component descriptor type of my object builder no, builder and let's pick the sensor. So this is a little bit difficult to explain at the moment because it's going to rely on some things we're going to do a little bit later I'm going to have to lay the foundation later on. But basically we've said, okay, hey, space engineers, my entity, my component that I'm getting stuck on is this sensor block. Okay. So that tells space engineers where to stick our new class. Easy to do. Oh, look at all these things. We can override joy. Let's override the initialization. There's nothing in, as far as I know, there's nothing in this base initialization, um, so you can delete that. So what are we going to do upon initialization? Well, the big thing that we need to do, uh, there are two things. The first thing is we actually want to find our sensor. See, we're attached to a sensor block, but we don't have any idea what that sensor block is. So here is where we use the I my set of classes. The I my set of classes is, as far as I can tell, instantiated objects. These are these are things that have been already put into the game world. So we're going to find the sensor block that's actually already in the game world. 
We're not going to be creating a new sensor block. We're not going to be referencing the sensor block factory class. We're going to be putting this sensor block into, we're, all, we're just going to be grabbing the sensor block that is already in the game world. So this uh, uh, setup has this thing called an entity. This is exactly the same as a game object in Unity, so it's exactly the same as writing this in Unity. But just like adding the game object, we're not actually just a game object, we are the specific kind of thing we want to be. So we override this by saying I, my, sensor, we cast it like so. And now we have the sensor. The other thing we want to do is we want to set this up so that when the sensor block changes, when it triggers, something happens. So how do we do that? Well, what sort of uh, events do we have? Well, look at all these events. On closing, on physics changed, on position changed. Unfortunately, the event we're looking for is not an on event. Uh, for some reason, they have several events that aren't pre-labeled with on, and the big one is state changed. That's fine, though. As long as we know it exists, we can track it down. We want to add uh, our new watching function. There we go. So we've said, well, this event, state changed. Can you um, make sure that we get pinged on that? Whenever you do that, you have to make absolutely sure that you also sign off when you're gone, because otherwise you'll end up with an event that's trying to call a null function. Um, so over here, we're going to go override close is the, is the version. This is like destroy in Unity. This gets called whenever the, whenever the object needs to go away, or whenever the script needs to go away. So we're just going to unsign up so, so that we don't leave any nasty little traces behind. All right, here we are in handle state changed. Bool obj. I don't know why they call this obj, but it's just basically whether the sensor turned on or off. So if the, if the sensor turned off, don't do anything. We only care about the sensor turning on here. Please note, this happens regardless of what else the sensor is set up to do. Um, this is a standalone class that fires whenever the sensor changed, regardless of whatever else the sensor is doing. Okay? So what do we want it to do? Well, we would like it to spawn in a chunk of rock. Okay. So in order to tell the game to spawn something, we need to go into the mod API. And specifically, we need to go into the API gateway that we are allowed to use. My API, API gateway. From here, we have access to a lot of cool stuff, like players, entities, the cube builder. Let's just go with entities. This is a list of all of the entities in the... Uh, it's, it's not actually a list. It's a, it's a reference to the existence of all of the entities in the game world. And what we would like to do is add a new object. Hmm. 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 We could add a new entity, but that's not what we want to do. We want to add an object. But the only way to add objects are to use these object builders. Okay. So we need to get a new object builder. So this is empty right now. We don't know what to do with it. We need an object builder. Well, we want to add or, right? Look at all these options. Hmm. Well, there's a lot of stuff we can add. Or. That's good. Hmm. So this is an OR factory. There's actually a cool set of things they do here using these brackets. In here, we can specify what we would like the arguments to be. You can hit period to bring up a list of all of the things that we can put in here, but you are not going to want to have a period in front of the actual uh, thing we're going to be using here. Subtype name is what we're going to be using. So what, side, what sort of OR do we want to use? How about stone? So now we have an OR factory that can create stone. But that's not going to work here. If we try to add the OR factory here, it'll accept the argument, but it's going to get real confused in the game because the OR factory doesn't create uh, entities in the sort of free-floating game objects in the game world entity sense. The OR factory just creates the abstract concept of OR. So we actually need to create a new factory. How about... What is OR exactly? Well, it's an inventory, right? It's an inventory item.
just like before, we can use these brackets. Pretty cool, right? What do we want? Well, we want an amount. So this will let us create a certain amount of inventory. How about 100 points of ore? Okay. But we also need to tell it to create the ore. So um, that would be content. But now we're creating an inventory item. We actually want to create a free-floating block, right? Uh, float. Oh, there it is, floating object. So now we have a free-floating object block, right? What are we going to put in here? Actually, I'm not sure we have to put anything in here. Item. There we go. So, so what we've just done is we've nested a lot of factories inside of each other. This is why I think that their default sa sample wasn't a terribly good idea, just because it, the most complicated thing they do is they nest these factories. And by introducing that right now at the very beginning, I've just shown you that there's kind of a maze to go through. It's not really as complicated as it looks, but this is about as complicated as it gets. We have an ore factory that can create the concept of ore, but then we need to make it into an inventory object, which specifies the amount and also the type, and then we actually need to turn that into a floating object. So we've got a floating object factory that relies on an inventory factory that relies on an ore factory. Well, anyhow, we want to pass that into here. Unfortunately, there are still a couple of little pieces to this puzzle because we haven't told the uh, floating object factory where it needs to put our object, and we also haven't told it um, that it should only work in certain situations. So first off, let's go ahead and set the flags up. This tells it to operate exactly when it's in scene. This way it won't not fire while it's in the scene, and it won't fire when it's things like an inventory item. So that makes it so that it all works as expected. We also need to set up the, f the position and the orientation. Now these are things we could have set up in here if we would like. We could have done position and orientation in here. But let's go ahead and set it up down here. There are a couple of places we want to do here. Position equals sensor, because that's what we are, dot position. Hey, look, there's a sensor dot position. Don't use it. We want to use the world matrix dot position or not dot translation, um, and the reason for that is because uh, the way that it does positions is not what you would expect due to the fact that we're using a a, a, a a library called VRage, and it behaves differently than you might expect. Rely on the world matrix system rather than the defaults, and let's move it up just a little bit, shall we? So we've just told it to we've just told it to put it above us. Now we could tell it the uh, the forward and the up like they do in the example, but I don't particularly see any reason to do that. So let's not bother. Save, and that should be everything we needed. Uh, this should literally be the entire script. Shall we boot it up and see what happens? Definitely creative mode. Mono test. Sounds like there might be a little bit of background noise in a second. Just bear with me. So, um, by the way, these C-sharp scripts compile quite slowly, but now we're in the game world. So let's find that class. Uh, it is the sensor. We created a new version of the sensor, right? 
What? It's not working. Why isn't it working? Well, the reason it's not working is because we didn't give it the position and the orientation. If we hit F11, you can see there were no loading errors, but unfortunately that's not good enough. So let's go ahead and quit out of this game, and let's give it the orientation. Actually, now that I'm looking at it, it might be this. Is it always going to be false? Let's just go ahead and give that a shot. If that's it, I'm sorry that I misled you. Um, I just put that in because I didn't like the way that it spawned both in and out. But I can't imagine that's the case. We're almost certainly going to have to... Um, that's fine. Don't, don't worry too much. Just go into Creative, Mods, Monotest. Okay. Go. And while that's happening, I will go ahead and edit this so that it works. Position um, forward equals sensor.world matrix dot forward and of course up equals sensor dot world matrix dot up no I don't save it just put it down all right so yep I was right um, so let's go ahead and add that back in if obj equals false return. I was trying to just point out that uh, this doesn't work exactly the way you might expect because it can and will fail silently or act uh, oddly in a way which appears to fail silently. So you need to be a little bit careful about it and if you really want to do this uh, in a way where you will be able to keep track of it feel free to do sandbox.modapi. and then you can actually send yourself messages uh, utilities dot show message send a message so you should be able to send yourself messages if you are unsure of what's going wrong feel free to fill your uh, fill your script with message comments by the way I didn't save this line so Grind, 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 grind. There we go. Oh, we hit F11 just to check. No loading errors. Okay. Oh, look it. It worked. So I wanted to point out that this failed silently when we didn't give it a rotation. That's something. That's the sort of thing you're going to have to be very careful of. Passing partial, uh, passing somewhat incomplete arguments will normally cause an error in most games and most APIs. But this is a very young API, and sometimes things will fail mysteriously. If they do, check and make sure that you're actually passing in all of the things that you're required to pass in. And that's it. I hope you've enjoyed this uh, little example of how to create code here in Space Engineers. There's lots of stuff we can do. Uh, for example, I'm probably going to be creating a mod where things like reactors damage objects that are nearby, um, or people that are nearby, using one of the uh, get entities in sphere commands. Uh, it'll be fun, and not that hard to do. Enjoy yourself.